You probably think this API uses TPL and returns a task of T, but that's not the case. Here is the API. It returns void and raises an event. Surprised? Let me show you how this works. Let's first understand the design of this component. When they run algorithm API is called, an input is provided, which contains a request ID. When finally the algorithm result is computed, an event is raised, which contains event arcs. And in these event arcs, we have the algorithm result, which also contains a request ID. With the help of the request ID, the caller of the run algorithm API can determine the proper result for a requested computation. The usage of this API could look like this. We have the component, we create an input and call run algorithm. We also register for the event. If we receive any event which is not related to the requested ID, we simply skip it, otherwise we remember the result. And so we can finally use the computed result. So you can see this is a pretty legacy component which uses the legacy event-based asynchronous pattern to implement asynchronous operations. Back to async await. As we can see, this AP design is not related to TPL or tasks at all. So how could we use await on such a design? It turns out that async await is not bound to tasks or TPL at all. It is actually pattern-based, which is also called duck typing. That means that we can await any object which follows a specific pattern. For async await, the pattern is any type can be awaited, which exposes an API called getAwaiter, which returns an awaiter, a class which has some defined properties. The details of these properties we will deep dive in a second. And the great thing is, we don't even have to change the existing component to provide such an API. Instead, we can also just provide an extension method. So let's create an extension method called getAwaiter. But which object should we extend? The existing API run algorithm returns void. In order to make this work, we have to create a small helper object as well as another extension method. The helper object we call algorithm result handle and we define it as a record. We will figure out which properties we actually need when implementing the getAwaiter method. But before we can do this, we need another extension method on iAlgorithm component which returns such an algorithm result handle. Okay, now let's try to implement the getAwaiter extension method. So what we basically have to do is we have to wait for the event from the iAlgorithms component, get the algorithm result from the event arcs and provide this result to the awaiter. So this means we need two things in the algorithm result handle, which is the iAlgorithms component itself and the request ID, which we got through the algorithm input. We have to provide both to the constructor and now we can register for the event in the getAwaiter extension method. We use a local function for that so that we can also deregister the event handler. In the event handler, we have to check that we receive the event for the proper request ID. And if this is the case, we deregister the event handler and we also remember the result. And finally, we need an awaiter class. To keep the first implementation simple, let's reuse an awaiter implementation from the TPL. It is called task waiter. To create such an awaiter, we reuse another class from the TPL, which is the task completion source. And we also use the task completion source to remember the result. And finally, we get the awaiter from the task completion source. And that's basically it. With these two small extension methods, we can await an AP call on the legacy algorithms component. Let's write another test case to prove that. Now let's run the tests and see that it works. Awesome. We got async await for a legacy API without changing it. And so we get the caller's code much cleaner. We just need to compare those two test cases. It's pretty obvious that the async await based test case looks much cleaner than the event based test case. Now you might argue that this is only working because we are still using types from TPL, the task awaiter and the task completion source. But that's not the case. As already stated, the whole async await functionality is based on a concept called duck typing and another concept called futures or promises. Actually, our algorithm result handle is a future, which means it provides access to a result which will be available in future. And now let's implement a customer waiter completely independent from any TPL type to show you how exactly this duck typing works. So let's first remove all the TPL types. Okay, and now let's implement this custom algorithms awaiter. The interface we have to implement is called iNotifyCompletion. And this interface provides an API called onCompleted. And we also have to provide two more APIs as we will see in a second. Let's clean up that code first. 
So we get the future into this class in order to have access to the algorithm component as well as the request ID. And we will remember both. And directly in the constructor, we also register for the event. Now let's fix the implementation of the event handler. And we realize that we need one more member to remember the result. This line is no longer needed. Now let's implement on completed. And here we get an action which should be called once the algorithm result is available. In this API, we simply remember that continuation. So we need one more member. And we will call this my continuation when the result is available. Let's fix the getAwaiter extension method. We actually don't need it generic here. Okay. That's the first implementation of our custom awaiter. If we check the test case, we see something is still missing. Let's look at it. The compiler tells us that one more API is missing, which is called is completed. So let's add this. Let's have a very simple implementation for now. Let's say the awaiter is completed when the result is set. Let's check the test case again. It's still red. Okay, there's one more API we have to implement, which is get result. So let's do that. And we simply return my result here. Let's check the test case again, and the compiler stopped complaining. So let's run the test cases again and see whether the implementation works as expected. Great, it works. So now we have an implementation of async await, which is completely independent from any TPL type. And from that implementation, we can also clearly see what async await actually is about. It is all about hooking up a continuation. So code which gets executed once the result from the asynchronous operation is available. What about error handling? If an exception would be thrown during the computation of an algorithm result in the algorithm's component here, we would catch the exception in the algorithm's component and provide the exception object through the event args. In our awaiter implementation, we could then check for the existence of an exception in the event args, remember that exception, and just throw that exception when the result is requested. We skip that implementation for this tutorial. This concept is pretty powerful. We can basically await everything which provides an event. Here's an example for the process class. We simply provide another extension method for the process class. We have to call it getAwaiter. To keep the implementation simple, we again reuse those two classes from the TPL, and we basically do the same thing. We wait for the process to be exited, and then just set the result to the task completion source, and use that one to create an awaiter. And with this new extension method, we could write code like this. Pretty cool, right? But there is a catch. The concept of async await makes handling async code look super easy. But you always have to check the documentation of the API which initiates the asynchronous operation to know in which thread the continuation will be executed. Is it a caller thread? Or is it maybe some thread pool thread? This might not be relevant if your code is strictly functional style, means you only work with the data passed to the continuation. But as soon as you have shared mutable state, you can run into concurrency issues using async await as well. And if you want to know how to write simple and scalable concurrent code, without running into classic concurrent issues like data corruption or deadlocks, then watch these two videos now.